So this first exercise is going to relax the nervous system and allow our body to be more receptive to all the work we're going to do today. With Peter, I'm going to do some deep breathing here. The crux of deep breathing is you're breathing out longer than you're breathing in to relax the nervous system. And we always remember we want to breathe through the diaphragm, uh, filling the belly with air. It's not about how much air you can get, it's how much air you can fill into the stomach here. We're also using a viper here but you can use a foam roller and what this is doing it's relaxing the erectors and it's giving Peter something to relax into uh, to be a little more mindful of his body through the breathing. So we're going to do a count of five count inhale, five count hold, and ten count exhale. It's three breaths a minute. Not very easy to do, it's a, it's a real challenge but if you get this right and this becomes comfortable it's going to really set you up for success for everything else we do. So I'm going to have Peter put his hands on his stomach, and I'll take him through the count. You'll do this about nine times for about three minutes, uh, but we'll just show you one for the purpose of time. All right, so we'll start with inhale for one, two, three, four, five, hold, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I cue Peter to breathe in through the nose and then breathe out through almost a whisper or a forced uh, kind of uh, whistle because it's going to slow down the exhale so he doesn't lose all his breath at one time. So that's how you'll start our uh, nervous system soft tissue sequence. We've already gone over this in the movement preparation sequence from the previous series. But now we just want to show you again because it's something you can't skip when you're dealing with the upper back and shoulders. So this move is going to be that thoracic spine roll. Peter's going to put his hands wherever he prefers, arms back, arms straight. Key points here again are just to make sure to roll the mid back to upper back and also not overextend his lower back but get his extension from right under those scapula wings, his shoulder blades, in the thoracic spine. Once he's done that for about 30 to 45 seconds, he'll roll over to his side and get the serratus anterior and lat. And the key principle here is to make sure he opens the hand here to pin and stretch and just go all the way down to his lat, pretty deep, and then back up always with breathing. The other thing I like to do here, perhaps because I'm not that tough, is I like to let my legs and my arms take some of the weight. I find if I try to put as much weight as possible on my serratus, I end up getting bruised. Now we're going to work on the pectoralis major, and we're going to use this supernova ball here. This is a pretty low density one. You can also use a lacrosse ball if you want to be a hero, uh, but I think you'll find that slightly larger, lighter, less dense objects will feel a little bit better on this one. I love this one because you can pin and stretch the shoulder in the motions you want to use it, so it's, it's extremely functional for the functionality of that shoulder girdle. So I'm going to have Peter place the ball right basically in the just outside the armpit of the pec and relax his chin and head on his hand here and I'm going to have him just reach forward. Now when he reaches he's going to separate his shoulder blade from his body, retract his shoulder blade in and then bring the arm down to a 90 degree angle. Reach up again, retracting. So again you're pin and stretching here at the same time as you're giving some soft tissue love to those overworked pecs. The other thing I want you to do is make sure you do a few reps where you're reaching out to the side and that's going to focus even more on the pec. Again, letting the scapula come out, letting the shoulder blade come in. Now we're going to work on neck range of motion. Basically you're carrying an eight pound bowling ball on your neck all day long, so you want it to be as centered over your body as possible. So I'm going to take you through a few different stretches here, and what I want you to pay attention to is to make sure um, to not hold these stretches for too long because your ligaments will take over. These are at most eight second holds, and then you move on maybe about 
four reps on each side is plenty. Just loosening up the body and the shoulders around the neck. So the first move I'm going to have Peter do are just some simple shoulder rolls forward and then backward. And the key here is he's just keeping a nice relaxed neck, cervical spine here, keeping whatever extension he has neutral right there. The next move is going to be a chin to chest drop where I'm just going to have him keep his teeth together and drop his chin as far as he can. This is the most important one for not holding longer than eight seconds because this is a decent amount of flexion on the discs. But again, if you don't use this range of motion, you'll lose it. So you'll feel a nice stretch through the traps. The next two are going to be for uh, the levator scapula and the actual upper traps, which often get very tight on people. So for, for those of you wondering what the levator scapula is, which is not only a good crossword puzzle word, you want to point that out, honey? Sure, so. sure. Yeah. So it basically elevates the shoulder right here and it goes just diagonal along there. And it's the main muscle that's keeping your scapula raised up and, and, uh, and elevated. So to hit that one, I want to look over this way and then take kind of a diagonal 45 down chin over collarbone clavicle and you'll watch the um, strain here you'll see right so one and to increase this stretch also i'm going to have peter clasp his hands behind his back that's going to pull the traps in tension and he's going to feel even a deeper stretch and then back to a neutral position Focus on the traps, and that's just a simple lateral flexion here. And this one, you're going to really feel almost a burning go through the traps here. But again, the more you can pin your shoulders back and down, the more you'll feel that stretch. For the last and most important exercise to counteract technology and keep the head centered over the body, we're going to have Peter do some chin tucks with extension. Now, the first move you'll do is actually glide your chin forward. And then you'll bring the chin back, staying in that same plane, and you'll create a fat chin here, which is okay because it's going to relax all the muscles in the traps, and it's going to really turn on those stabilizers right behind the neck. Once Peter makes that fat chin, he's going to look up, but only look as high as he can without actually losing that fat chin because all, this is the incorrect way. If I have him go all the way up, he's going to start to really torque the spine there. So he's going to keep those muscles turned on, glide back, Look up, keeping that fat chin, breathing, glide forward, glide back. Great strengthener and an amazing counteraction to all the technology that we're wed to. And also I find this one of the stretches where it's really difficult for me to breathe through my mouth. So you got to remember to breathe while you're doing this, but note that for most of you, it's going to be more comfortable to just breathe in and out through your nose.